I got to admit it. I did not see this coming. In a million years, I did not see this coming. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I, I, I can't. What am I going to say? <sighs> so, um, I did not see this coming. I mean, I imagine the majority of the audience is pretty shocked by how poorly paced and I don't want to say disappointing, but, um, lackluster this season was. I want to start off by saying, no, I do not think House of the Dragon Season 2 deserves all of the hate that it's been receiving. The universe of Game of Thrones is no stranger to being shrouded by the cloud of controversial seasons, but I am definitely not of the overreacting mindset that I've seen all over social media and even the Hollywood critics, which usually doesn't even matter because I believe most of them just have the collective IQ of your average Whole Foods tomato, but all, if not most people, are saying that this is the worst and most controversial of all of the seasons, obviously including season 8, which, in my opinion, is an absolutely criminal take, seeing how that is a series finale even to this day, a half decade later, is still the biggest fumble and fall from grace in terms of what could have been achieved and cemented in absolute glory to, well, actual dog shit on a screen, and lessons that I'm sure will be taught in universities for decades to come of how not to handle a series finale. Let's just keep it real, this season wasn't even as bad as season 7 of Game of Thrones, but I digress because otherwise my yapping ass is just going to go into a full-blown rant about the atrocity against humanity that the ending of Game of Thrones really was. But even with all of that being said, I can say that, unfortunately, season 2 of House of the Dragon did not meet my expectations. And after watching the season finale, a finale in which you genuinely feel like as an audience member, for lack of a better way to put it, were just blue-balled and asked to sit through a season that was set up that while for sure had some peak moments in regards to its action and battle sequences, moments of intellectual character interactions and monologues, especially when thinking about most of the High Council scenes, moments of breathtaking and creative cinematography that has become the norm with this franchise, and of course, incredible VFX with the dragons throughout the entirety of this season. There are actually no complaints and will be no complaints about that specific aspect of this show at all in this video because the dragons themselves were truly just a spectacle to watch overall. But that's the problem with pure setup without a semblance of payoff. We the audience are not as dumb as Hollywood would like to make us out to be, and as an audience, especially in regards to a TV show, understand setup for future seasons. We live in the most uncreative time in Hollywood history. We are all familiar with the game of milking an IP until there is literally nothing left to get. But that's why the feeling of being blue-balled as an audience is the best way to go about describing a season such as this, because it really shows the skill issue that the writers of the show had and were tasked with this season of how to write setup for future arcs, but still find a way to write a seasonal conclusion, aka payoff that could, would, and should simultaneously coincide with the overarching narrative. And I guess even though we as a collective audience have gone through this before with this specific franchise, it was just my own dumbassery to think that it couldn't and, well, shouldn't happen again. Fuck me, I guess. But in order to get to the specifics of what I do think worked well this season and what I do not think worked well this season, for now, let's go ahead and get into... Don't worry mates, this isn't a video essay, so I'm not about to dive into all of the side plots, side quests, and little nuances that all of our characters have going on this season. Besides, there are a lot of Game of Thrones slash House of Dragon YouTubers that are going to do a lot better job at it than a bloke like myself. Season 2 pretty much follows the immediate aftermath of Season 1, with Aegon usurping the Iron Throne from Princess Rhaenyra due to Queen Dumbass being, well, well let's just say her name definitely stuck around this season in my household. And because of that blunder, the realm is split into chaos, with the realm forced into supporting either House Green of the Targaryen High Towers or House Black of the Targaryen Targaryens. Targaryen Valyrians? Eh, you get my point. With the two houses vying for power in a world about honor inhabited by characters that have absolutely no honor, you watch as the war before the war plays out as our character betrayals, unforeseen circumstances, and in-universe shattering revelations continuing to mount up more and more with each recurring episode until you are hit with the finale so gripping and suspenseful that the finale forgets to drop the axe in its entirety. Like, come on guys, 
who doesn't just want to be suspenseful the whole fucking time. And while you as an audience member might think to yourself that that plot synopsis is relatively straightforward and way too simple to create an engaging 8 episode narrative from, congratulations because you seem to be on the same page as the writers, and so with that, we as an audience have been also blessed to receive one of the most incredibly paced character arcs when Damon decides to fuck off to Luigi's mansion and, well, go through the same character arc as last season. And yeah, sure, I'm being sarcastic, but those scenes are truly some of the most boring, but then engaging scenes throughout the entirety of this season, believe it or not. See, my main issue with House of the Dragon Season 2 is that I was one of those fans that was genuinely holding out patience and preaching patience to the people that I talk about this show with, just for the season finale to kinda slap me on the forehead with a clown sticker. It feels like a classic situation of a franchise knowing exactly where they're heading and what they envision for that final destination, and just simply forgot that there's a journey to flesh out in order to get there, which is unfortunate when you have so many different characters in order to work with with some creative dynamics and in a world that is so rich and deep as the Game of Thrones universe. And while usually during the majority of my videos, either negative or positive, I don't really go in too deep into my own personal gripes or nitpicks that I have with that said particular show or movie, like for example, the campfire and space scene for the Acolyte, Oh man, I guess you actually have to be like chronically online to get that reference, but I feel like for a show like House of the Dragon Season 2, a season where the flaws of the show are relatively noticeable, generalized, and I would say mostly shared by the majority of the audience, it does give me a little bit of extra time to really dig into some of those personal problems that I experienced. Like how noticeable it became of how lackluster House Green was after the show wrote out the Go Auto Hightower. I mean, sure, that was the point, seeing how he was the only character at the Red Keep that was able to operate with functioning brain cells, but it just became clearer and clearer as the season went on of how his character was able to command the room and genuinely have presence in every scene that he's in, with no one even able to stand by him at that level of craft, for maybe the exception of Damon and Rhaenyra, and that emoting work from the goat? Mwah. Chef's kiss. And while I could talk about how annoying of a character Kristen Cole was just from an audience's POV, I would easily say that the biggest downfall for me this season was the tragic writing of Allison's character. Don't get me wrong, I didn't care much for Queen Dumbass in season 1, so it's not like I had a lot of love transferring over. And while it was the point of her character to be shown in a sense of nothingness with no real power behind her sons and the dragons that they ride, it was to a point where I genuinely think there was not a single line of dialogue that she uttered from that head-ass mouth that didn't make me want to drink a gallon of bleach as you genuinely think to yourself, what is she going on about? And that finale, God, man, what an absolute bloke. And in a demented way, it fills me with great joy that her coined nickname of Queen Dumbass didn't come back to bite me in the ass. I did briefly touch on some of the positive elements of the show that I did enjoy towards the beginning of the video before, you know, we had to talk about the elephant in the room, but I can't leave here without, again, just like with season one, giving my props to Emma D'Arcy for her performance as Rhaenyra. Sure, I like Otto as a character just because he brings some much needed intelligence and dedication to his craft to a show that is devoid of it, but Rhaenyra as a character is definitely a close second for me in that department and easily my favorite character in the show overall. And I think her delivery and presence in all of her scenes is what makes her lack of action character arc this season bearable for even the TikTok-brained audience members. Emma D'Arcy really just nails it with the character of Rhaenyra, and needless to say, it is my wet dream to get her and Otto in a room like Olena and Jaime in season 6 and just watch the magic happen. Overall, as I mentioned, while there are certainly some aspects of House of the Dragon Season 2 that I did genuinely enjoy, and moments that I will certainly go back and rewatch over this two-year break, unfortunately, a season without a real seasonal conclusion is pretty criminal in my eyes, and I think I actually speak for the majority of the audience on this one, especially when you add to the fact of poorly paced character arcs, writing, and dialogue sequences that borders on the level of Game of Thrones Season 6, before, you know, we truly shit the bed and blue balling for the sake of blue balling. It's unfortunate because when you take a step back now that the show has concluded and really take a grand look at the entertainment that we were just asked to ingest, I think it's pretty fair to say that House of the Dragon season two was pretty disappointing. But hey, the war war has finally started now. 
So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, I really did have a problem with this one, man, because we did have our moments. And while the show overall was kinda mid, did those moments give it the necessary push where I, as an audience member, can see and visualize the effort being put forth? You know what? Yeah, I think I do. As someone who is on the negative finale high right now, I'll look back on this and believe that I made the right decision. Again, hopefully. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below, just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.